Good afternoon. This is our group. I'm Tiffany Brown. This is Alan Eisman. This is Adam Richelieu, and this is Edwin Niederberger. Today we will be presenting eSurance, a human touch in a technological world. Now, when someone says eSurance to you, what's your first thought? Maybe it's technology, maybe it's computers, maybe it's insurance. But that's if someone says eSurance to you. We realized pretty early on that brand awareness is one of eSurance's weaknesses, as well as its poor brand perception. We think that its strengths are that it is affiliated with Allstate and with the MLB, and that they can use these partnerships to leverage themselves to access to their target market demographic. The current situation is that eSurance is poised to leverage its partnerships with MLB and with Allstate to target these target markets, but there are barriers to doing so. Their current product category is very competitive. Amongst MLB fans, they are currently 18th in the auto insurance category. This instantly raised two questions to us. How do we shift their brand perception and how do we grow their brand awareness? We think they do so with a human touch in a technological world. Thank you, Tiffany. So after analyzing the situation, we realized that it was imperative that we humanize eSurance, that we move them away from this robotic impression that many consumers seem to have of our brand. And one way that we wanted to do that is to steer this perception, the same way that other companies have done with their various faces of the corporation, if you will. So today, we would like to present to you the new face of eSurance. Mr. Ethan Schur. Now, Ethan Schur is going to be an insurance customer service agent. The advantage that he provides to us is that when we present him via advertisements, whether digital, on social media, or in television, we can show him physically helping consumers out there. Show that when you submit a claim, it's not just going into a database that's going to get stuck somewhere. There's someone that will actually help you. Two important things about him is that, A, he represents the target segment that we're trying to attract. He's young. He's in his late 20s, young enough to attract millennials and old enough to stay within that age bracket, and he's tech savvy and well educated as well. Additionally, he reflects the values that eSurance wants to show trustworthiness, reliability, efficiency. Also, the slogans that you hear John Krasinski say all the time on eSurance commercials can be tailored specifically to Ethan. For instance, he was literally born to say, instead of insurance for the modern world, insurance agent for the modern world. But most importantly, Ethan is a die-hard baseball fanatic. Man loves it. Analytics, the whole thing. He brings a human touch to the brand, a face. So when you see eSurance, you now think of humans, not just specifically technology. And one other benefit that we have is we can leverage the current relationship with John Krasinski into the future. Even though he's only a voiceover, he can be the bridge to introduce this new character, which will be new talent in the future. So the first campaign in our integrated marketing plan is going to be the Elect Ethan campaign. What this is going to be, the key performance indicator for this plan is an increase in the, in the considerations of our brand. What we're going to do to achieve that is drive as many people as we can to MLB.com slash vote. This is going to be done three ways, TV, digital, and social. First of all, in the first part of the campaign, we're going to have TV spots out there introducing Ethan to the world. So John Krasinski will come, the familiar face, introduce this new Ethan character. As the weeks go on, Ethan will develop his own personality and start to lobby himself for the All-Star Game. Now, Ethan was a D3 athlete at the club level, but he still thinks he, still thinks he should make it to the All-Star Game as a relief pitcher. Um, his tagline is going to be, he's lit because he's a customer service agent, he's literally saved more than any closer in baseball. Um, to supplement this, we're going to have a complete digital and social strategy. First of all, Ethan is going to be mainly focused on, face, on Twitter and Instagram, where he's going to be engaging with fans. Additionally, we're going to have a Facebook and Snapchat for the campaign as a whole in order to continue to drive fans to action to go to MLB.com slash vote. Additionally, we're going to leverage our existing relationship with MLBAM in order to uh, Basically, every, every Monday morning, we're going to take over the whole page of every home of every team, and Ethan is going to go out there and tell all of his saving stats, all the customers he helped the week before, and compare his stats against all the other players from the MLB last week. Additionally, which we'll touch on a little bit later, we're going to form a strategic partnership with Sony 
And what we're going to do is use our homegrown database and Sony's database in order to complete an email marketing plan. Now the purpose of this is to serve impressions and drive consideration. We're going to continue with the current plan, uh, in incentive plan for voting, which is every vote you get is a chance to go to the All-Star Game for two fans from each city. Now the way we're going to further incentivize people is a votes for quotes plan. Now what this means is that if you actually go into eSurance and get a quote, you get 10 extra votes per day for the entirety of the campaign. Now what that means is you get 10 extra votes to be entered in the sweepstakes, and we think that, we think that will drive people to further action. Additionally, what we're going to do is a significant retargeting campaign, so that way if you've ever been to MLB.com slash vote, no matter where you go on the web, we're going to say go back to MLB.com slash vote. Additionally, we're going to leverage the existing partnership with uh, MLBAM and their Wednesday, MLB Wednesday Snapchat story. So what this is, is every Wednesday they have a behind the scenes look at different games from the player perspective, from the fan perspective, from the employee perspective. What we're going to do is tap into that as well as the recent, um, so, recent political theme that they've been going on and develop these avatars for the most famous players. So Bryce Harper will have his own avatar. Mike Trout will have his own avatar. And what you can do is engage with the fans, have them say who they want to vote for, and use these avatars like this. But of course, Ethan's going to be in the mix, interspersed in there, saying that he deserves to go and that you should vote for him and not somebody else. Um, Now, while acknowledging that the MLB All-Star Game is in the summer at a time when three other major sports are doing their off-season, we were looking for a way to engage those other sports fans and push them towards the All-Star Game and therefore e -shorns. Now, in doing our market research, we had a very interesting real revelation that Adam is going to talk about in a little bit, where we found a way to access a kind of different targeted target market, but we were still, um, we plan on leveraging our fan fest activation with, by partnering with Sony Entertainment. We plan on doing this through our keeping our motto, human touch in a modern world, and by aligning our competitive advantages as technological innovators in our respective industries. It will also be beneficial as our target market demographics are very similar. We plan on doing so through a virtual reality experience. Fans would come in and they would have to enter their email to play, so e insurance would be able to grow their customer base and database. Um, they would be competing against each other. One player would be pitching while the other would be hitting. They would be able to then share their virtual reality experience on multiple social media platforms, such as Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Meanwhile, e insurance agents will be on the scene displaying this virtual reality activation via Periscope or Snapchat. Thank you again, Tiffany. So a major component of our campaign to humanize eSurance is that brand perception, to draw that image of the human assisting you in your head. But it's also about brand awareness. It's about expanding the brand, tapping into a new market that has been previously untapped into. Now, we believe that we are uniquely situated based on the date and time of the MLB All-Star Game, our participation in FanFest, as well as, most importantly, our new face of eSurance, Ethan Schur, to tap into a very specific market. That market is San Diego Comic Con. Now, after immediately following the All-Star Game and Fan Fest in San Diego, San Diego Comic Con takes place nine days later. They're the next tenant in the convention center. And we believe utilizing Ethan, we can reach this base as he is a typical, what you would assume, game and techie. He's extremely tech savvy. You might even post a Twitter post or tweets about him cosplaying, which is a big thing at these comic cons. And it might seem strange at first to try to combine some type of sports sponsorship in with the gamers, the techies. However, we found in our research that this target segment is the exact ideal segment that eSurance is seeking. For instance, two thirds of comic con attendees are between that age bracket of 25 and 49 that we're searching for. Furthermore, 93% of Comic-Con attendees are under the age of 49, which means the majority of that missing 33% will be within our target segment in the next five to 10 years. Additionally, over half are married, about two thirds are homeowners, and 60% are that ideal household income we're looking for. But furthermore, eSurance furthering that technological brand, as we've talked about with virtual reality earlier, 
companies like Sony and AMD have actually tested virtual reality products on participants at Comic Con. This aligns both the human and technological segments of it. Now, the outreach on social media is kind of limited based on San Diego Comic Con. There's only about 1.7 million on Facebook and another 700,000 on Twitter. However, the coverage at San Diego Comic Con is so great that picking up consumers from our partner with Sony, or if we hit IGN, Entertainment Weekly, that's another Twitter feed with three to five million followers. In. If we can continue to leverage this over time, particularly in the future, maybe at future Comic Cons and other cities where that MLB All-Star game will be, we can steadily grow this space and be the first auto insurance company to really tap into this market and get a hold of them. Thank you. Um, speaking with an insurance expert yesterday, we learned that insurance doesn't have any nationwide corporate social responsibility programs. So we believe that the Home Field Advantage Initiative is a great opportunity to help build the brand perception and engage with local communities. Inspired by ho hockey, the NHL, and Kraft's uh, Hockeyville uh, Initiative, we believe that we can create a similar type of uh, program. We, using MLB Advanced Media, they will create a platform where communities can nominate local fields to be uh, retrofitted into state-of-the-art baseball facilities. Um, and then on that same platform, you can nominate for a field, you can vote for fields, or learn more about the program, or learn more about eSurance as well. The winning uh, community field would win a $100,000 grant. To maximize reach for this program, uh, we would like to announce it live at the MLB All-Star Game, when a lot of people will be watching, and then announce the winning community and the winning field at the eSurance end of the year MLB awards. Um, speaking of the eSurance MLB <laughs> awards, we saw that they have 24 different awards. They have the best starting pitcher, they have the best offensive player, a wide range, even best tweet, best social media personality. However, there was a missing award that we noticed. There was no best closer award. And we would like to recommend creating a best closer award or a best saver award. And this will be another campaign run by Ethan, who believes he is the best saver. He's the one that deserves to win this award. Since the MLB end of the year awards by eSurance are in November, we can also capitalize on the political campaigns that will, in the national election, so you can have the swing vote, or you can encourage people to go out there and vote because the fate of the nation rests in your hands if Ethan doesn't get elected. Um, so other platforms that we would also utilize would be MLB network commercials, uh, social media with Twitter and Facebook and Snapchat and um, Instagram. So the timeline that we believe would be most ideal in implementing all these strategies is as follows. We would start in April after the season has began and start to advertise Ethan, start to get that brand awareness the same way that Dr. Pepper has used the college football playoffs recently with Larry Culpepper. We want to build that off at the right time, which would be April after the season when people start talking about the All-Star Game. Next would be in between May and July, the two months leading up to the All-Star Game. This past year is when MLB Wednesdays, the Snapchat story Alan touched upon earlier, that's when they began to start suggesting get your ballots in for the game. This is the perfect time to start implementing Ethan into that strategy and slowly start to build that brand. Now, unfortunately, it's likely Ethan is not going to be elected to the All-Star Game. But in July, with Comic-Con and FanFest, we can continue to leverage that brand to build that visibility, if you will. But furthermore, with our CSR strategy, as well as the MLB awards, we can keep this relevant. Instead of just surrendering any votes, basically, at uh, the MLB All-Star Game, we can continue to build Ethan's brand, say, he didn't make the game, but guess what? You can vote for him as the best saver. That keeps him relevant, so come next spring, he's still a fresh name in people's minds. What we believe is a huge strength of these ideas in terms of the future is that all of these ideas are sustainable. They're reusable. They're things that can be implemented again and again. For instance, the Comic-Con, DC and Miami are the next two places that the MLB Awards or MLB All-Star Game is going to take place. Comic-Con takes place within two months of each of those events in their respective cities. <clears throat> Furthermore, Ethan, like we said, keeping him going till the end of the season keeps him a fresh name. He can move forward the way that Flo has been around since 2008. This becomes a new face that can be leveraged into the future. So to quantify our strategy here, we've, project we've projected a return on investment. Now we know that this strategy, um, I mean this sponsorship 
with MLB ballot and MLB awards last year generated 3.2 billion impressions. Now the objective this year is only 500 million impressions, which we believe is easily achievable. We want to prove that this wasn't a one-time first mover, you know, fluke. We want to prove that it's a sustainable model. Now the way we do that is we know that at the Super Bowl, the insurance advertisement, uh, TV advertisement that was a, a sweepstakes giveaway generated 1.5 billion impressions that day. Now what we think is we can capture 30% of that over the course of four months of voting and actually achieve basically what we need for the 500 million. So that would be about 450 million. Now we're gonna supplement that with the um, home field advantage initiative, which we baselined off of the NHL and Kraft Hockeyville, which they generated 300 million impressions their first year when Johnstown, Pennsylvania won. Um, now one thing you might notice here is that we're spending 500 million on the FanFest build out, but we're actually only generating about 27 million impressions off of um, that investment. Now what that is, is in a, it isn't a near term investment. This is a long term strategic partnership where we can grow into a relationship with Sony to prove that we are on the cutting edge of technology along with them. Nope, oh, sorry. Um, as Adam had mentioned, most of these initiatives are both sustainable and replicable, which means we can tailor them going forward in uh, the following two years. Also, we believe that it's important to keep Ethan as a insurance representative because it really gives that idea that there is a human behind those computers. There's someone there for you, someone that's engaging and cares what you want and is there for you. Um, another recommendation was partnering with these high value tech companies such as Sony or MLB Advanced uh, um, Advanced Media. Media, and that will really add credibility to us as a leader in our industry as a technological company with insurance being efficient, being quick, and what you really need in the modern world. Lastly, we believe that continuing a CSR campaign will engage with the local communities and uh, help build brand perception and let people know like physically that we're there, we care about them, we care about more than just insurance, that it's more of a personal relationship between insurance and the everyday person. Thank you so much for your time, and if you have any questions, we'd be happy to answer them now. Good job. Uh, uh, Ethan, to me, when I went to the World Series the last two years, uh, that goofy orange uh, Miami guy, whatever that guy in the stands, you know what I'm talking about? Marlon Man. Marlon Man. <laughs> have you, did you think about Ethan in the stands at some games, at sightings, as to you know, keep him as a celebrity, and, you know, a sighting of Ethan? You know, as part of the campaign. Yeah, that would be great with the social media, especially with the Snapchat and show him like he's ready. Unless like, he's too nerdy. <laughs> <laughs> well, he loves baseball, so yeah. Yeah. all the more reason. Um, I think that would be a great way for him to show that he's actually engaged and wants yeah. to be there as well. I'm going to ask you the same question I asked in the presentation. Mm -hmm. You're promoting it as get Ethan to the All-Star game. Yep. And then you're also telling me that Ethan can't be eligible for the All-Star game. Why can't we have, why isn't there a threshold that if Ethan gets it? Because I actually thought it was such a great idea to start with. I actually looked up the Josh Donaldson last year and set a record with 14 million. Why aren't you setting the plateau of 20 million to at least get there? I know it sounds ridiculous, but I mean. Yeah, so we, we've considered that and, and as we thought about it, we kind of consider him a, an honorary player. So if he reaches a certain status, which we haven't identified yet, what we might do is see if we can negotiate with MLB, since it is such a push and such an engagement opportunity, maybe we can get him to throw out the first pitch or to do, have some part of the game but not actually be a player because you know, the MLB likes to promote that this game matters, right? Because it determines who has home field in the, in the World Series. Additionally, what we think is we can get him into the celebrity all-star game in which former athletes and celebrities play each other in softball. Don't you feel though that that's a killing on a step, uh, that's stepping on a killer joke? I mean, if you've got this joke and you've got something that, in a way, achieves activation to get people to actually do a quote, which I think is a great way to actually show that people actually went through insurance to get those votes. Mm -hmm. But then, at the end of it, you don't allow them to do the very thing that you've promoted to do. I know that you want to get them into a celebrity game, but it's still not the same. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Doesn't that hinder the argument for why somebody would want to go? Because we're not just talking baseball fans, we're also talking Comic-Con. Mm -hmm. People that normally would not care and probably do not care about your product, mm -hmm. but we want to get them involved. <clears throat> to well, some degree, we actually see this as a win-win scenario for us, 
So one thing that we had, an idea that we flirted with originally was trying to do something with the Home Run Derby, for instance. But we knew that we would have to buy sponsorship rights there, and it's kind of hard to nitpick where we want to buy activities. So yes, if he does gain popularity and get in, that might give us a leverage point to then have him appear as an honorary player. All right, but even so, we can launch a social media campaign afterwards. If he does gain that popularity, that will just spring him further forward. Uh, another question. Why Sony as a partner? Oh, we chose Sony as a partner. They have, they're coming out with uh, their virtual reality. It's um, Project Morpheus, and they're trying to get it to market faster than their competitors. We thought that if we were going into Comic-Con, that it would give us the leverage to, to allow Sony to see the benefit in partnering with us in terms of engagement in the, the fan fest and in terms of virtual reality being cutting edge in the sports world as well. And Ethan likes Sony products. Yes, he does. And cosplay. Loves as it much all. as we wanted to humanize the product, we still wanted to maintain how forward thinking and technological eSurance is. And the partnership with Sony hit that target segment and also kept us on the forefront of cutting edge technology. And they're also an MLB All Star Game sponsor as well, so we had the natural tie in there. How do you get access to Bryce Harper and the other uh, guys you mentioned? Yeah, I mean, that would require. Um, a negotiation with the Players Association in order to get their likeness, um, but yeah. <laughs> well, they the MLB is legally contracted. Anytime they mention the ballot, specifically well, two months prior, if they mention get your ballot in, insurance has rights there. So on MLB Wednesdays, players will sometimes take Snapchats of themselves in the locker room, or fans might take a Snapchat of them from the field. It's honestly just brand association to some degree. Just being able to show Ethan on an advertisement the next snap period after Bryce Harper, which wouldn't even require a deal with them. It just can leverage that brand together, basically. Do you guys consider um, using the full allotment of a million dollars? I noticed you left kind of 80000 on the table. Is that contingency? or? Yeah, it's basically a... Uh, reserve just in case something popped up that we weren't really sure of. Um, you know, we're not sure. We haven't identified the new talent to play the Ethan character yet, and we want it to be a new person and not a known a known actor like John Krasinski or um, an actor like that. So we're not quite sure how much that's going to cost. So we kind of left a little wiggle room to work with. Right. We also considered when we talked to the insurance rep, we were talking about um, getting asked. Uh, um, access to things like the home run derby and how things are that are parlayed out, but they're not, they're hard to cut and divide. So we thought that if we were able to get access for Ethan Schur to get to a spot in, in the um, All Star game, that maybe if we were able to buy a segment of the All Star game that would allow him to be in, we could use that reserve money towards that revenue, towards that activation. Are you sure about Ethan? <laughs> Couldn't be Very sure. Ah, that was it. Twitter handles, you know, all that stuff. What are your expectations for the amount of followers that they would have individually to keep in itself? Well, we compared him to a couple other spokespeople, specifically within the insurance world. So we looked at Flo, and she has 7 million followers on Facebook. And of course, she's done 120 commercials, so of course, and had five years of experience and a head start. But at the same time, leveraging Major League Baseball's connection with us and having this campaign focused on him getting into the All-Star game, we believe we can get one to two million followers within the first uh, year and then increase the momentum going forward. So in looking through this um, and the idea of using Ethan, did you have a hashtag, anything in there, <coughs> design? Yeah, I mean, the, the one that I had, and I, we must have left it off of the slides, was during the elect Ethan campaign, the obvious one was hashtag elect Ethan. Okay. Yeah. Okay. But it, it didn't make it onto the slides. Esher was another one using his first initial and then his last name to play off Esherance, which was a major reason okay. we chose the name. So. Do you have any thoughts if a year from now you, 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 you implement this, what would you do to build on it? Oh, we had a couple ideas um, pushing the homeowner's insurance avenue and maybe being able to do uh, marketing targeting um, like Father's Day in a couple of years, maybe depending on if we grow in the, the sports segment, being able to leverage the, Olymp uh, sorry, the, 
the World Cup that would be coming up in two years, things of that nature. We discussed it, but we didn't want to spend too much time. We wanted to get into the weeds in the first year out. Yeah, and the, the push for 2016 is we're the exclusive auto insurance provider. So what the main purpose of this year is to get the direct association with baseball, and then maybe next year we can use the Ethan character or whomever to promote our homeowner's insurance product. But it has to be associated with baseball first before the people understand. It's also important to note that if the sponsorship with Sony works out the cross promotion, we could do something similar to what Turkish Airways has been doing with Warner Brothers and co-sponsoring movies like they're doing with Batman versus Superman. Sony does own a lot of properties similar to that. With that said, I think, unless there's any final questions or anything, I think you guys are off the hot seat here. Again, congratulations.